Today we're going to be looking at several applications of using manipulatives with math. Today's examples will begin with some examples of applications in which we are basing our structured procedures on phoneme tracking. This is an exercise used in multisensory structured language in which the student is asked to change individual phonemes and then blend into a syllable or word. The teacher might say, show me a. Ah. If that's a, ah, change a ah to at. If that's at, change at to pat. If that's pat, change pat to pet. In this instance, it is incremental with the student only changing one element at a time. This is applicable to math in a number of ways. The first way that we're going to be talking about today is basic quantity construction and numeracy. In numeracy, a child make, might make a simple bead ring. They might count one, two, three, four, five. Moving on, they might be able to show the composition of five. They might move it from four plus one is five, three plus two is five, five minus two is three. Research is telling us that the human brain can recognize quantities up to four without counting. That's basic numeracy. And we want to build on that as we build the composition of quantity. Later children might use the same examples, the same numbers, and use unifix cubes to highlight equality. They might learn that we have five tubes, cubes. Five cubes can be made with four plus one. Five cubes can be made with three plus two. Later at the middle school level, this can become something we use to teach properties of real numbers. If four plus one equals five, and three plus two equals five, then four plus one equals three plus two. Transitive property of equality. Later we take the same phoneme tracking idea and this time we're going to apply it to place level, place value. And in place value we're actually going to have the students constructing quantities. I prefer to start with craft sticks because it teaches regrouping very efficiently. I might have a child make five sticks with tally marks. At that point I would say show me five. If that's five, show me twenty-five. Notice the bundles with hair bands. If that's twenty-five, show me one hundred twenty-five. If that's one hundred twenty-five, show me one thousand one hundred twenty-five. If that's one thousand one hundred twenty-five, change it to one thousand twenty-five. That's the equivalent of phoneme tracking and it allows a teacher to use an alternative assessment to see if a child has actually learned the concept. Let's move that on to base 10 blocks. Base 10 place value blocks are especially effective for also teaching place value at higher levels. However, I'm always looking for composition of five. So when I put my cubes onto the place value mat, I build a pyramid of five, which is largely in the pattern of dice. Putting one more allows the child to see, within the grouping of the one's place value, five cubes, and one more makes six. Show me six. If that's six, show me 106. If that's 106, show me 1,106. If that's 1,106, change it to 1,206. And thus, the teacher can walk around the classroom and assess whether individual students have actually learned the place value and the values. I'd like to take that one more step. Let's take this incremental, sequential, cumulative, and thorough application and use the same language at an algebraic level. Students learn specific functions. They learn them as 
input-output models, tables of values, graphs, various ways to show a function. We learn that the x and y axis creates the origin where they cross, and the parent function, where nothing is done to the x value, no coefficients, nothing added on, all that does is originate at the origin. A linear function would be one in which the line crosses where the x and y axis cross. I might show, with using a calculator and teaching it efficiently, that when I add something to the x, it's going to move the line up on the y axis. We call that the y-intercept. I might show that when I multiply the x value by a whole number, it increases the speed with which the function occurs, making it a much steeper slope. I might also show that when I multiply the x value by a fraction, it makes it happen more slowly and creates a less steep slope in the line. So I could actually use phoneme tracking to move this. I could use any types of wires or lines. I use uh, pipe cleaners. I can use plant wire from the craft store. I can put it on a magnet board that has the coordinate plane. But basically, I'm going to add to the x value to move it up, subtract to the x value to move it down. I'm going to multiply the x value by a whole number to make it more steep, and multiply the x value by a fraction to make it less steep. I'd like to take that to only one more application today, and that would be quadratic functions with the parabola. The bead is the vertex, or the turning point of the parabola. And likewise, once I learn the transformations of functions, I can learn that when I add y equals x squared, it's going to be at the origin. When I say y equals x squared plus 3, it moves it up three places from the origin. If I say y equals x squared minus 3, it moves it down from the origin. If I say y equals x squared plus 7, obviously it moves it up. There are other things I can do to the quadratic function. When I multiply that x squared by a whole number value, it's what we call vertical stretch, and it actually makes the quadratic function occur more rapidly. It makes it much more skinny. And that would be the language of the child. To multiply the x squared by a fraction, or a decimal fraction, I would do what we call vertical compression, and it makes it less fat. When I add to the x squared within a parenthetical expression, before I square it, it moves it left and right. So I could actually give children that phoneme tracking activity now with my parabola. Show me y equals x squared. Show me y equals x squared plus 5. Show me y equals x squared minus 5. If that's y equals x squared minus 5, show me y equals parentheses x plus 2 close parentheses squared minus 5. So I can actually ask children to manipulate the equation, the graph, without ever having them do a table of values, without ever having them go through graphing things on the coordinate plane, just to learn the values of the places within the quadratic function. That's all for the day, and that's phoneme tracking applied to math.